In this tutorial, we're going to learn to make these socks, my new pattern called Loaded German Short Row Socks. And the reason I called them Loaded German Short Row Socks is because I thought it sounded like a baked potato order and it made me laugh, but also because there are so many techniques used that folks have been asking for. I couldn't list them all out in the pattern name or the video name. So I'm going to just call them Loaded and tell you here the features of these socks. They are toe up, German short row, using fingering or sock weight yarn, magic loop, two at a time, and sized for men and women. I think that's all the things that everyone's always asking me for. Now, um, this is a more advanced pattern because it's, we're, we're doing two at a time in magic loop. If you're new to sock knitting, I'm going to recommend a different pattern for you to get started with. My, uh, I'll give you a link here to my uh, toe up socks using German short row pattern. German short rose pattern. That uses thicker yarn, uh, bigger needles, it's knitting one at a time, it's a much better introduction to sock knitting. But if you're an experienced sock knitter or you've already knit that pattern, this is a pretty easy step to go into. Um, I'm going to give you the really short rundown on why people have been asking for this pattern with all <laughs> of these features, give you the rundown of each one of the, um, the techniques used. Toe up is great because it makes a really easy sock to fit and you use all of your sock yarn and you have nothing left over. Um, fingering sock weight yarn, a lot of my patterns use thicker yarn to help teach the techniques used in, um, in that sock, whatever the tutorial is. This one uses fingering weight yarn. I think people want that because they have a stash of sock yarn at home, <laughs> the yarn that they bought on vacation or the yarn they couldn't resist or they got as a gift or whatever. So this will use up that yarn for you. Um, two at a time magic loop because people get second sock syndrome. This is kind of a common thing where people get excited about a sock pattern, they knit a sock, and then when it's time to make the mate to that sock, they've lost interest in the pattern and then they've gone off to knit the next shiny thing and they abandon the sock. So this is two at a time so that when you bind off, you're binding, binding off two socks and the pair is made, no second sock syndrome. And then size for men and women because people always want both, especially if someone likes a pattern, they make it for either you know themselves, someone else they want to knit it for, uh, they want to have both men and women. That was way too much talking for just saying size for men and women. Okay, before we get into this tutorial, um, I want to say that everything you see in the video, the needles, the yarn, everything else is on my website. Um, and in the video description field below. If you click the little I in the upper right hand corner, that will take you to my website where you can get your copy of the pattern to follow along with this, Loaded German Short Row Socks. And the disclaimer I wanna say is if you are a magic loop two at a time purist, you might not like the way I'm going to teach some of this. And that's because I'm going to have us knitting the toes one at a time and uh, not magic loop. And I just, I'm teaching it this way because it's the way that I do it myself because I think it's easier because I want you to have a really good chance at success in these socks and I think it's a lot less fiddly and it's more fun. The toes come together really quickly and if you're knitting short rows two at a time, there's a lot of needless slipping stitches back and forth which can cause tension issues. But if you just whip the toe out one then the other then start magic loop, I think it's better. And so that's the way I'm going to teach it. So don't get upset if you're all excited to start two at a time and I'm having you knit the toes separately. That was my disclaimer. <laughs> so anyway, get your pattern and um, we will get started with the toe next. We are ready to get started on the socks and I'm gonna give you a close up of what I have here. Let's go ahead and take a look. These are socks knit in my size, and this happens to be turtle pearl yarn that comes with the self-striping yarn that matches up into <clears throat> two identical pairs of socks, no fraternal twins. And this yarn happens to come with an extra little hank that's enough single color for the toes and the heels and the cuffs, which I thought was very cute. Again, all this information about this exact colorway is in the video description field below. And actually, uh, 100 grams of sock yarn, 50 grams for each sock, is enough to make socks much longer than this. I stopped knitting at about eight inches because this is the length of sock that I like to wear. That's why I stopped, but I could have made much longer. In fact, I think I have enough yarn left over to even knit a pair of um, booties or something out of it. 
Okay, if you have knit my German short row socks before, this is going to be a review for you. But if it's new to you, um, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to start with a provisional cast on. And one question I want to answer here. People ask me all the time if they can substitute a different cast on for the one that I use in my sock tutorials. And the one that I use starts us here in the sock. You see where we are on the toe? Knits us down towards the tip of the toe and then back up like this. So my, the cast on that I use in my videos starts here. People ask me, can I substitute a Turkish cast on or a Judy's Magic cast on? And the answer is no. Those start you off here. It's really a different sock pattern that uses those. So I just want to answer that question because it comes up pretty often. Okay, I am going to use thicker needles and thicker yarn bigger needles and thicker yarn to demonstrate this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do a little abbreviated toe here uh, just to give you an idea of how the technique works. But you will want to follow the pattern, everything spelled out row by row for exactly how to do this. The first thing I'm going to use is some scrap yarn for the provisional cast on. I'm going to tie a knot, a knot that I can feel, and then make a slip knot. And that knot is there so that I can tell the difference between the slip knot end and the non-slip knot end. Then I need a crochet hook. You don't really have to know how to crochet for this. We're just going to use a crochet hook as a tool. I'm going to chain a few stitches. And then I'm going to cast on the number of stitches for my size right onto the knitting needle. I'm using a double pointed needle. You don't have to. I'm only using a double pointed needle because I like to use the shortest needles possible. These are nice and short. You can use the circular needle that you're going to use later if you like. Whoops, I'm, I need to tell you what I'm doing and not just do this, right? <laughs> I, was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking way ahead. So I have my working yarn. I'm going to set the needle on the working yarn and reach the crochet hook over the needle, grab the yarn, and pull it through the loop on, on the hook. That's one cast on. Pull the working yarn back behind the needle, reach the crochet hook over, grab the yarn, and pull it through. That's two cast on. Pull the working yarn behind the needle, reach over, pull it through. You see how this goes. This is an alternative to picking up stitches from the spine of a crochet chain. I found that people prefer this method to picking up stitches. And I aim to please. I'm not counting. Okay, when you get the correct number of stitches cast on, chain a few stitches and then cut your yarn and pull the last end through. That is our cast on. You can put that scrap yarn away. And then take the color that you want to use for the toe of your socks and find that knot you tied that marks the slip knot end, because we want to start working with the slip knot end over here on the right. And we're going to knit across the stitches on the needle using our sock yarn in the toe color. And we're going to purl back across those stitches. This is the setup before we start working the German short rows.
Okay, we're ready. Now I'm going to show you the techniques used here, but everything is written out absolutely row by row. All of the German short row instructions, everything is completely there in the pattern. Um, I'm just here to show you what it looks like in real life. So I'm ready to work my first German short row row. I'm going to knit across to the last stitch. And if you've worked short row toes before with wraps and turns, you'll see that the, the way we work short rows back and forth is pretty much the same. It's just the technique of German short row is different than, than working traditional wraps and turns. Okay, then I turn the work. And this is how I'm going to work a German short row on the wrong side. I'm on the wrong side, I'm on the purl side. So my yarn is here in front. I'm going to slip that stitch to the right needle and then pull up on the stitch so it creates kind of a funny double stitch. Yarn forward because I'm on a purl row and then purl across the last stitch. Okay, now this is how I'm going to work a German short row on the right side of the work. I've got the knit side facing me. I'm going to actually pull the yarn in front, slip that stitch from left to right, pull up on that stitch to make a funny double stitch, and because I'm working a knit row, my yarn's already in the back, I don't have to yarn forward. I'm just going to knit across. And I'll show you this a couple more times. I'm going to knit up to the second stitch from the end, turn the work. My working yarn is already in front because I'm ready to work a purl row. Slip that stitch from left to right, pull up on it to make the funny double stitch, yarn forward and purl. Okay, second to the last stitch, turn the work, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, slip that stitch, pull up on it to make the funny double stitch, and you'll notice the funny double stitches look different on the right and wrong side. It's fine. On the two ends of the, the row. They work the same way, even though they look a little different. Okay, the third stitch from the end, turn the work, slip that stitch, give it a tug, yarn forward and purl. Yarn forward, slip that stitch, give it a tug, and I'm going to knit across. Now I'm going to go ahead and consider that, um, obviously I have not really knit enough here to make the whole toe of a sock, but that, I'm going to consider that the first half of the toe done. Now I'm going to finish up the second half by pick, going back and reincorporating those double stitches that we were leaving behind on the previous rows. I'm going to knit up to the first double stitch, knit those two halves together, knit the two halves of the second one together, turn the work, and do the German short row technique. And do the same thing on the purl side.
Okay, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I was going to keep going. Knit the two halves of, or purl the two halves of the double stitch together and the next one. Turn the work. Do the German short row technique on the right side of the work and knit across. Okay, the first one and the next one. And the same thing on the pearl side. pattern tells you exactly how many stitches to knit or purl before you hit the double stitch and um, it's pretty easy to see these big clunky double stitches here in this worsted weight yarn a little bit harder in fingering weight but I give you the numbers no problem Okay, I just have one double stitch left. I'll knit those two halves together. Turn the work. Slip that first stitch. No German short row this time. Purl across. and purl the two halves of the last double stitch together. Okay, so I sort of made a sock toe. <laughs> it's definitely an abbreviated version. I'm going to cut this yarn. I'm done using this sock color or this toe color. I wanna switch to a different color for the actual body of my socks. So we are ready to start knitting in the round. We're ready to use Magic Loop. And I have my two sock toes finished here, and I have my circular needle. And again, this is all explained in the pattern. I'm just going to demonstrate it here so you can see what it looks like. I want my working yarn over here on the right on each sock, and I want my circular needles to, whoops, my circular needles like this with the socks. I want my, my needle points pointing over here to the right, and half of the, the stitches on one half of the cord and half of the stitches on the other half of the cord. Really just like this, that's my goal. So the first thing I'm going to do is slide these stitches off this needle and onto the circular needle. I'm just slipping as if to purl, not twisting the stitch. And then I'm ready to remove the provisional cast on from this first sock. Now remember, this is my goal, to get them on here like this. But I need to incorporate these, these stitches that I have on this circular needle. And when you flip the work so that the provisional cast on is facing you, you want to have the non-slip knot end over here on the right. We want to start unraveling from here. And so I'm going to pull that end out. I think I must have something split, there we go. And unzip the crochet chain until I get to the first stitch. And the first stitch is always wonky. You know, nothing in knitting starts out easy, does it? It always starts out with like the worst thing, is the, the first thing is the hardest thing. So the first stitch is wonky, the yarn actually runs through it. So I'm going to just get my needle in there. I 
That's not going to help. These are pretty pointy needles. But it's not a normal stitch, so it's, there we go. Then once I get my needle in there, I'm going to pull the yarn out of that stitch. Okay, that one's over, right? We don't have to do that one again. Now, when we're looking at, we're looking at the stitches, we want to look at the V's going up into, um, into the provisional cast on. We're looking at the toe color. In this case, it's a salmon pink. And I want to look at the V's. And I want to put my needle under the right leg of each V. And that's how I'm going to pick up the stitches. And I like to do a few at once. There's one. Just if you get lost, you're not sure what to pick up, just follow the V's, the column of V's up, and grab the right leg of the top one. The top one's easy to see because it's right next to the scrap yarn in the other color. Okay, I've done a few there. Now I can unzip the provisional cast on. And if it snags, just get some scissors and cut it. No big deal. I usually like it when it snags in videos so I can show what I mean. <laughs> just You can always cut the scrap yarn color. Just don't cut the sock yarn color. And of course, it doesn't, it snags at home every single time, but it doesn't snag on video. What do you know? Okay. Now, remember my goal <coughs> is to get the two socks on here like this. So I'm going to slide these stitches onto the same needle here. Well, let me, let me demonstrate that a little bit better. The provisional cast on goes on what is the back needle and the live stitches go on what is the front needle. Oops, was I just off camera there? I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. Okay. And now I'm all set up to retrieve these stitches from the provisional cast on the same way I did there. First one's wonky. And then going across and picking up the right leg of each stitch. I lost my concentration for a second there. Anytime you get lost, just look for the V's. One time I had someone email me and say, when I look for the V's, I just see ends. I say, move. Move your gaze one half stitch to the left or right. You'll see these. Okay, I think I'm gonna split that. We got it. Okay, that was all you had to do to get the toes finished and have a much easier start on your magic loop. So our tail ends are over here on the right on each sock. We have half the stitches on the front cord, half the stitches on the back cord. The extra cord is sticking out over here. Needles pointing to the right. This is our magic loop starting position. Anytime you get lost when you're knitting magic loop, just get yourself back into this position and you can figure out where you are. So now I'm going to show you how to actually get started using the magic loop on these two socks. Scoot everything close to the tips. Pull the back needle long so that you have some slack there. Put your needle in. 
and grab your first ball of sock yarn. Knit across those stitches. Then you finish that sock, scoot the second sock up, put your needle in, drop the sock yarn you were working on the first sock. <laughs> you don't want to connect the socks. <clears throat> Grab your second ball of sock yarn and start working with that. We're having fun now. We are connected in Magic Loop. Okay. When you get to the end of that row, you turn your work. You get yourself back into the Magic Loop starting position. Pull the back loop long to give you some slack to knit with. And the working yarn is right there ready to go. Knit across those stitches. This one's the wonky stitch. And it is tight. I want to tell you on this first stitch that you knit. Wow. There we go. I think I was splitting it. This first stitch that you knit on Magic Loop, watch the tension on that stitch because there's a possibility of pulling it much too tightly because the stitch is just here on the cord. But if you pull it and you take a look at that stitch and it looks about the same size as the others, you're good. I've got a twisted stitch there. Okay, when you finish the first sock there, drop the working yarn. <laughs> I can't emphasize that enough. That wonky stitch is making it tough <clears throat> to slide this. We'll get past that. These are the provisional stitches, so tension isn't as nice as the other rounds will be. My working yarn is right there for the second sock. Watch the tension on that first stitch. You want to pull it so that it, it's tight enough. Got a twisted stitch there. But not, um, you don't want to strangle the last stitch from the last side. Okay, we've worked one round. The, other, the next rounds are gonna, all going to be easier <clears throat> because we're done with the provisional cast on. And we start cleaning up some of these ends. That'll be nice, huh? Get yourself into the magic loop starting position. Your working yarns in the back. Pull the back needle along to give you some slack and just keep working around and around and around. Two at a time, no second sock syndrome. That's basically how you're going to knit the whole sock aside from the toes and the heel. Um, just keep going around and around like that. Next up, we will talk about the heel. As you're working through the pattern for the size you're knitting, the pattern will tell you exactly when to stop knitting the foot to start knitting the heel based on the size of shoe that you're knitting for, either for men or women's foot width. When you start knitting the heel, there's, um, I'm not going to demonstrate the whole heel because 
If you've knit my socks before or short row socks before, you know the heel is exactly the same as the toe. It's unbelievable. Row for row, it is identical to the toe. The only difference is we don't have a provisional cast on because we don't have to. We have live stitches here already to work from. So um, it's a little, little maybe confusing with the magic loop, so I'm going to explain it here. Let's take a look. Look at this happy, happy sock yarn that I'm using. I love it. Making my identical twin socks and all the information as usual in the video description field and on my website. So I have knit up to the length I need to start knitting um, the heel in my size. And I have my sock yarn, my foot color yarn is still attached. There's no need to cut that yarn while I work on the toe, the heel. I just need my two little balls of the color I want to use for this. Now I am going to work all but the last row of the heel stitches on one sock, work all of the heel stitches on the second sock, then go back and knit the last row of the heel stitches on the first sock, and then break that yarn. I'm going to be done with it. I'm just going to show you how to keep your working yarn going and attach the yarn for the new sock. I started in the magic loop position, pull myself some slack, and this time I'm actually using the working yarn that is the same weight as the pattern, using fingering weight yarn. And while you're doing this, there you can just let the other sock hang out there. It won't bother anyone. It'll stay there until you're ready to work it. And I have put a little clipping marker between one half and the second half because while I'm ignoring this sock, there's a decent chance that all the stitches will get pulled to the end like that. It's no problem. I won't have to recount. That clippy marker is holding everything. This sample has a lot more stitches than the last sample, doesn't it? Okay, I knit the last stitch. I turn the work. I do my German short row technique and purl back across. And you don't have to watch me do that whole thing. It's just the exact same thing that I did on the toe. And again, everything is written out row by row for exactly when to switch, do, switch from the first sock to the second sock and go back to the first sock and start knitting in the round again switching to your sock yarn, breaking the toe yarn. So that's pretty much it. Like most of the sock is the magic loop knitting uh, round and around two at a time. We take a break for the toe, we take a break for the heel. And then once you finish the whole sock and you're out of sock yarn or you've made the socks as long as you want, there is a bit of two by two ribbing, knit two, purl two. And in the sock yarn that I'm using, there's enough yarn to knit the, the ribbing in a different color, which is what I've done here on these socks. But you don't have to. You can do whatever you want or you can switch it up to one by one rib if you prefer. And then when you go to bind off the socks, you'll use a stretchy bind off, bind off all the stitches and bang, you have a whole pair of socks ready to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this pattern. I hope this tutorial helps. Good luck.